Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is lesson two of scale models. In this lesson, you're going to learn about two major parts of scale models. Okay, you're going to learn about corresponding parts and scale factor. After this lesson, you need to be able to identify and describe corresponding points, segments, sides, distances, and angles. And you need to be able to describe how a scale factor relates to corresponding segments, sides, and distances. Notice not points or angles. And you need to be able to explain details about corresponding angles. You'll know you're successful after this lesson if you can find and label or describe corresponding points that are in scaled figures. You can describe the effect of scale factor on the corresponding parts. You can determine if shapes are actually scaled copies using scale factor. And again, know how corresponding angles compare to each other. So first let's start off. What are corresponding parts? So let's take two shapes here. We have shape A, B, C, D, and then we have a larger version. It was a scale copy of W, X, Y, Z. So corresponding parts are parts that are the same in the same spot on both shapes. Okay, so a corresponding point to B would be in the same exact spot on the other. So X is a corresponding point to B. So if I had D, where is the corresponding point on the other shape? Well, that would be point Z. Okay, so corresponding points are in the same place on the two shapes. Next, let's look at segments or sides. So corresponding sides, again, are the same side position-wise on both shapes. So here I have side A, D. That would correspond with the same side, W, Z. So A, D was the longest side of the small shape, WZ is the longest side of the larger shape. Those are corresponding segments or sides. Okay, and then CD would correspond with which segment of the larger shape? That would be YZ. Now let's look at corresponding distances. So distances can be segments. So here I have BC which would go with x, y, but unlike segments, we can look across a shape for a distance. So I could find the distance from b to d, and that would correspond with the same distance from x to z. And then lastly, we have corresponding angles. So similar to points, Corresponding angles are in the same position on both shapes. So angle A corresponds to angle W. Angle C would correspond to angle Y. Let's look at how corresponding parts compare to each other. So I have two different shapes here. I have A, B, C, D, E, and P, Q, R, S, T. So first, let's look at the points. So again, point D, we're looking for the point that's in the same spot on the different shape, which would be point S. There's nothing real special about points other than that they're in the same location. Next, let's look at segments and distances. So segments and distances. Let's say shape A, B, C, D, E has side lengths 
It's 1.25 tall and 1.5 wide. Well, when we look at the other shape, it's no longer 1.5 wide. It was 1.5 wide two times. And if we looked at how tall it is, it's no longer 1.25 tall. It's 1.25 tall two times. So the larger shape is twice as wide and it's twice as tall. Let's check out the distance. So from A to C is 1.54. Well, if I keep that same thing going, 1.54 now it's 1.54 twice. Everything was multiplied by 2. This is called the scale factor. So your scale factor, that's a word you need to know, is how much you multiplied by to go from one shape to the next. So in the original, everything was the original size. To get my copy, everything is now twice as big. It's times two. Let's check about angles. So we had the same two shapes. Okay, We know that the sides and the distances were times two. Well, let's check out our angles. So let's look at E. E is a right angle. It's in that corner if you remember you can make a right angle angle T is also a right angle okay remember the distances were times 2 but the angles are not times 2 what would happen if we actually made it times 2 so originally angle A going along the line towards C was 55 degrees and then P to R was also 55 degrees. If we made that one times two all of a sudden it would be off the shape and that's not where that distance should be going. Okay, So corresponding angles are the exact same. So whatever it was on the first shape it should be the same on the second shape. So if angle C was 135 degrees on our original shape, our corresponding angle, think about which one that should be, that should also be the same measure. So angle R should also be 135 degrees. Okay, angle D was 125. So what should the corresponding angle be? It should be S and also 125 degrees. Corresponding angles are the same. They are equal. Now, let's look at two shapes that are clearly not scale copies of each other. Okay, PQRST is definitely stretched wider. So let's look at how things compare. So points they're in the same location still. We can't really use points to determine if things are scale copies. What we can do is check our segments and distances. So we have the same two dimensions as before, 1.25 tall, 1.5 wide. Our copy is 1.5 wide twice and if this was a scale copy, everything now should be multiplied by 2. Well, 1.25 goes to there, times 2 is no longer the same shape. It's off our shape. Okay, Distance, it was 1.54. 1.54 takes us to nowhere. Du multiplying it by 2 didn't take us to point R like it should have. Okay. And when we're checking our angles, our angles might be the same, okay, but it's not a scale copy. When you're deciding if something is a scale copy, you're going to check your segments, distances, and angles. If the 
segments and distances are not multiplied by the same scale factor each time, it is not a scale copy. And if the angles change at all, it is not a scale copy. What if a shape was rotated? Well, here I have the larger copy of our scale model that was rotated. Did it matter? None of our dimensions changed. Okay, A to B corresponds with P to Q. It's twice as large as it was. A to E corresponds with P to T. Again, twice as large. From A to C, it was 1.54. Now it's P to R, 1.54 times 2. Angle C and angle R are the same. Okay, those are scale copies. So rotating did not matter. In this lesson, we learned about what are called corresponding parts. So a figure and a scale copy have corresponding parts. They're in the same position in relation to the rest of every part of the figure. Okay, We could have points, segments, distances, or angles. So in the picture here, polygon 2 is the scale copy of polygon 1. Okay. They have corresponding points. B corresponds to H. C corresponds to I. They have corresponding segments. So segment AF corresponds to segment GL. And they also have corresponding angles. Angle DEF, okay, if you're not sure how to read a three letter angle, the middle letter is what the angle they're talking about. So DEF corresponds to angle JKL. In addition to corresponding parts, we learned about scale factor. So the scale factor between polygon 1 and 2 is 2 because all of the lengths and distances were doubled. They were multiplied by 2. The angle measures, though, stay the same because corresponding angles stay the same. After completing this lesson, do you know how to identify corresponding parts? So points, segments, distances, and angles. Do you know how to describe how the scale factor relates the segments and distances of the figures? Can you explain about corresponding angles and how they are related? And can you determine if two figures are scale copies based on the corresponding parts and scale factors. And that's all there is for lesson two on corresponding parts and scale factors.